Uh, welcome to Jenkins Governance Meeting. It's the 17th of November, 2021. Remind everyone that we abide by the Jenkins Code of Conduct. So be nice to each other. Uh, agenda topics that I had include news, election status report, and Gavin will put you on that one. Highlight from the mailing lists and community forum. Anything else that needs to be on the list? Oh, you're way ahead of me on that one because I forgot to do that this week. Oh, actually, I wanted to thank you for creating the draft draft agenda. It made my life much better by what you did. So thanks very much, Gavin. Also wasn't me, but thank you. Oh, whoever created it. that It's really marvelous that we've got it. Oleg is now here. Super. So news and election status report and mailing list highlights were the three topics I had. Oleg, any topics that need to be added to the agenda? So, yeah, sorry, I have been a bit disconnected over the past weeks. Uh, yeah, last time we, yeah, we had some uh, discussions uh, related uh, to ownership, uh, but uh, it was uh, brought up to the infrastructure team yesterday. So I'm not sure whether it makes sense to discuss it uh, today until we get some clear details from the Linux Foundation about what they actually expect. So uh, right. uh, this is uh, the story about, uh, so the Linux Foundation would like to have uh, the admin GitHub account uh, registered as owner uh, for all project repositories and organizations. Got it, okay. Well, so let's let's at least put it there. We've got it as a topic and we'll make sure we actually, maybe let's just put it as a top level topic because it's really not a mailing list topic, right? That's a that's sort of, oops, sort of an independent thing on its own. Great, okay. All right, anything else that needs to be on the agenda? Okay, and so news uh, 2.321 has released with new table layout, very attractive. It's looking really good actually. And a new plugin manager, some plugin manager layout improvements and fixes to a number of regressions that had crept into 2.320. Uh, thanks very much to Jan Farachik and to Tim Jacome for their work there and to Uli Hoffner. Uh, it's, it's, it's really, Pretty cool to see what's happening in, in the Jenkins UI. The 2.319.1 release candidate has arrived. Uh, it needs deeper testing, I think, than usual because it's got six backports that were six different changes that were backported and has some, some thing, major improvements like the inclusive naming changes that we've got to be sure we get into the upgrade guide and well described in the change log. Kathy Chan is a, a release lead. This is her first time doing a release lead. She is in the same team that works. She works with Bea Munoz and um, Ildefonso who have both been release leads before. So she's got good mentors. Last, uh, last news item, the Jenkins infrastructure costs look good for being in within budget. Congratulations to Damien DePortal and the rest of the infrastructure team for bringing costs down significantly in the last month. Any questions on any of those news items? Okay, Gavin, you wanna give us a status report on the election? Sure, the status is it's ongoing. Um, we debated whether how much information we wanna share publicly, but I think we can safely say we have about 40, or sorry, we have about 50% of the registered voters, voters have now, re, let's try that again. 50% of the registered voters have now voted. So we, we still have another, what, two weeks for everyone to vote. So we should be nudging probably again to remind people to vote. Um, this year was, there was a snag that we have, you have to activate your email with Concordia um, for gRPC reasons, so just another, you don't get an email saying to vote until you do that. Actually, you don't get, you don't get any, if you hadn't done it before we started the election, you don't get an email saying to vote. Right. 
So now, but could, can we, or could the election committee send email to the registered voters? I assume we've got that list. What we don't have is we, we have no association to know which voters have actually voted. Yeah, I am, I'm only peripherally on the election stuff. So um, okay. we can bring it up with uh, Olivier if you want. Um, but considering the next meeting is two weeks away, I can nudge him, but I think we'll stick with traditional methods. I don't know. Yeah, so I'll, I'm going to certainly be actively encouraging people to vote that, that I'm aware of where I know their email address looking at looking at their names on the voter list. Great. Yeah. They'll, if, if they get spanned and have already voted, it's no harm. Yeah, because okay. they've already voted. They can't take their votes back. So, right. Yeah. Exactly. Anything else on election? No. Um. Okay. So then, Oleg, anything else you need to share, want to share on the, the repository ownership? Well, uh, I do not have much to share. So there is a kind of uh, abstract request. Uh, it's quite clear justification uh, that uh, in the event uh, that uh, current maintainers have means become unavailable, uh, uh, Linux Foundation would like to have an opportunity to take over the repositories so that uh, the projects could continue which is generally a good safeguard. Uh, and this is what the uh, Linux Foundation, CNCF uh, do for all reported projects. But yeah, when Jenkins was unported, it wasn't done for Jenkins. And uh, now yeah, it's a kind of reasonable question whether we want to have such uh, recovery plan B, especially since we have a lot of confidential information, uh, including unreleased security fixes, some, uh, uh, private repositories and Jenkins infra. And uh, of course, if we give owner access to a GitHub uh, uh, organization uh, to account with unknown number of users having access to that, basically it means that uh, any of these users can potentially exploit uh, our continuous delivery pipelines and release something just by direct push, for example. Uh, so, security-wise, uh, there are concerns we need to figure out. Uh, and again, uh, yeah, I brought it up with Tracy Miranda uh, some time ago. We still don't have information how it would be implemented, what is the expectation, etc. And why just GitHub? Why don't we do the same for Docker Hub, social media? Uh, or probably we should do it, uh, but uh, there is no guidance for that. So this is just a topic uh, that concerns me because I do not uh, expect us to easily build a consensus uh, on this topic. Um, and uh, yeah, once we have clear guidelines, we will need to have a conversation about that. That makes sense. Thanks. Anything else on repository ownership before we go to the mailing list highlights? Okay. Uh, so we've had, we had discussions. I think I started the discussions roughly two weeks ago on the docs triage team. We got agreement there. When I talked to the docs office hours participants Monday, late, late Monday, they felt like, hey, let's go ahead and put them in the triage team, even if they don't have um, a, signed a signed CLA, uh, because the permissions are so light on the triage team, no real risk there, and we hadn't previously mandated it. Now, when we, in some future day, promote them to become uh, copy editors, then they must have a CLA. So, so it'd be good for us to get the easy CLA implemented, but it's not a, it's not an urgent or emergency kind of thing. Yeah. So I should be able to enable easy CLA quickly. Um, if we press it with a grid plan that we just ditch the current uh, flow and basically see, 
easy CLA is enabled only for our infra CLA repository. So basically, if you need to sign CLA, you just submit pull request today with your metadata, and then the bot requires you to sign. Uh, that's it. so it's a straightforward. Uh, if there is meet in that, I can enable that. Great, and I think I think we had uh, plus ones all around for yes, it was okay to go ahead. Had it been discussed, I thought it had been discussed in the dev list. Do you feel like there needs to be more discussion? Or are you looking for more plus ones? Or no, it's just something oh, okay. on my to-do list. Perfect. Great. All right. Uh, next topic was end of life plan for Java 8. Olivier uh, Lamy had noted that Jetty 9.4, 9.4 will end of life in the next one to two years. And Which that's not exactly a surprise. Right, right. No shock at all, right? It's um, it's they've already got Jetty 10 and Jetty 11. So no, su no surprise that they would eventually stop supporting 9.4. Uh, when that happens, that would be very, very significant to Jenkins because that's that's where Winst Winstone depends on that, right? So um, and Jetty 10 and Jetty 11 do not support Java 8. So there's there's definitely a sometime before Jetty 9.4 and it reaches end of life, Jenkins should be stopping its support of Java 8. The question is when and what process. Uh, discussions so, are happening. Uh, okay. Also the question is whether to go straight to Java 17. Oh, it's oh. So one of the options potentially. Uh, but uh, yeah. So for me, what I mentioned at the moment is the, there are actually two questions. Whether we explicitly deprecate Java 8 and whether we remove support for it. And so the, the current warnings are not are not an official deprecation. Uh, but they are they are there are current warnings and so your notion the, the question was shall we explicitly declare java 8 is deprecated with some targeted end of life date well, maybe even without targeted date so ah. some grace period so we can say that uh, yeah we declared deprecated uh, in one year we might remove it or might not uh, but yeah, we can say that uh, yeah, for at least one year it will be supported in terms of security releases, etc. Uh, plus, we still have a related question whether we would like to allow uh, plugin maintainers to release Java 11 plus only plugins because we have uh, all the support uh, inside the Jenkins core for that and inside update centers. We just need to make a call and uh, allow to release Java 11 only plugins. But uh, obviously, for Java 8 users, it will cause uh, some disruptions. Most likely, they will be issuing uh, non core tools, for example, plugin installation manager for sure, maybe other tools uh, relying on metadata directly. Uh, so, before we do that uh, action, uh, I would rather prefer to have Java 8 explicitly deprecated. Makes sense. Okay. But uh, again, I do not have strong opinion of when we should do that. Right. Uh, good. Good insight. So, and I don't. I'm in terms of Gavin. I think you highlighted for us in our last session. This section of this meeting is really noting things where the board does not define these things and is not necessarily responsible for them. The community will choose choose that probably based on an eventual JEP proposing some some plan of action. So I think this is for our information. Mm -hmm. Well, we should also add it to the roadmap, I believe. Oh, all right, that makes sense. And that that is something that we manage in the, it would be managed through the governance board. Good, good point, thanks. All right. 
next topic on the was managing GitHub access through repository permissions updater. And Gavin, do you want to give us a, a how that's going, what your experience is, etc.? Yes. So prototyping is going decently. Um, we can read all the teams relatively quickly. I think we figured it was less than a minute to read all the teams and all the members. Um, the next steps would be kind of defining a format. Um, there's some debate right now because uh, the RPU was designed for one purpose and is slowly migrating for another purpose. And that means some of the schemes are a little, scheme is a little bit confusing. Um, I admittedly haven't worked on it in a couple of days, but the next steps for me is to find an easy way to identify when a new user is added so we can validate that new user instead of trying to validate all users. Maybe. I don't know if I, I actually care. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because it could be fast enough to validate all the users and we don't care. So uh, research is coming along. I think it'll be a positive win. Yeah, thanks. So I, 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 I'm, I'm certainly interested in it. That I think it, it sounds very promising. Yeah. Any questions for Gavin on managing GitHub access or re related to it? Also, the biggest problem is edge cases because we have many repositories uh, that include external collaborators. Uh, there are some repositories which have different permission model. Yeah, I um, kind of don't care about those. Um, I'm only doing teams and all repositories have access or should have access by teams. So I'm not going to manage the individual or contributors. I'm just going to be managing the team so that people get invited properly and everything like that. And teams are a lot easier to get data back out because any, uh, for we have a JSON file that lists every user and what team, what repository they have access to and admins just can't be listed there because technically they get returned for every repo. So the teams fix that by having very concrete, this team has this users, ignoring admin or not admin, it's just these teams have these members. So I think we're going to stick with teams. And then we don't have those nearly as many edge cases. And at least to start, I don't intend to delete anyone from them. Um, it'll just be adding new ones. Members. Yeah. And then we can get a report of which users need to be deleted. I don't know if sure we have even the bot. I don't think the bot can remove members either. So, you know, at this point we can only add them. Um, and then, you know, if that works well and smooth, then we can start having it uh, be the source of truth. So the team members get added or removed from this, but that's a longer project. But I think doing it as teams makes it very clean and neat. Excellent. Last item was just a word of note that FOSDEM is going to be virtual this year. So the FOSDEM conference in Brussels will happen in February. And uh, Olivier Vernain had stated that he plans to assist with others in again having a CI CD dev room. Those are all the topics I had. Anything else we need to cover today? For me, yeah, I okay. might have some topic uh, for the next governance meeting, uh, but yeah, right now I'm still in a kind of onboarding mode of my new job, you know, my personal stuff. Well, and, and thank you for being here, Evelina, calling in from a, a hotel room in Oslo. So thanks very much to everybody being here. We'll the call next this... meeting will be with the new board, or do, does that we usually wait another week or two? Uh, oh, oh, next good week point. we'll be with uh, results preview, I guess. So uh, effective date for the new board is December third, as listed. Okay. Uh, so basically, we'll have board members elect or something like that. 
because by this time uh, the poll will be closed, you get the immediate results with the CIFs. Mm -hmm. uh, though there will be some uh, period uh, where people basically can uh, do less considerations. Uh, but yeah, taking the number of candidates, yeah, I don't think that uh, there is much uh, uh, things to consider. Cool. So next next meeting won't be just like normal, except we might have more people. Right. Hopefully, we'll have more people. <laughs> Hopefully, every meeting we have more people. So exactly. So all right. We should uh, just a uh, topic. Let's release Jenkins four or Jenkins eleven. <laughs> Jenkins eleven. We skip Jenkins X and go straight to Jenkins eleven. Yeah. And uh, so you're see what windows. people say. I see what you're doing. <laughs> all we right. can either confirm or deny. <laughs> well, then why don't we do with Jenkins 360? Okay, I'm going to take off then. Thanks, everybody. Okay. Bye. Bye. Thanks, bye. <laughs>